come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Or if this is your first podcast, welcome aboard. We talk about movies ad infinitum. For your listening pleasure and enjoyment. We also make up words. Oh, those $20 are actual, words, huh? That's uh, Latin. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, you know, he's just talking up to Latin. <laughs> but thanks for uh, listening. However, you found us on whatever fabulous internet uh, repository of podcasts, wherever you found great podcasts, go over there right now and give us a star, a like, or hit the subscribe button. Why mm-hmm. don't you? If you haven't already, yeah, go uh, to YouTube and hit subscribe. Uh, that's right. You can, we're on YouTube. We're everywhere. We're taking like over the 50 world. Fifty more of you should go on to YouTube. And that's right. I didn't actually look where we were on that one. But um, so uh, I tell you what, uh, you can also get a hold of us on social media because you, we want you to join in the Freak Show family. Talk to us, and we'll read your comments later on our show during Igor's mailbag. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Night Freak Show, on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. By email, Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And these are the internet radio superstars Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight's movie was chosen by Sean. What did you make us watch? <laughs> uh, tonight we watched a sequel. Oh, the, shocking. Because the spring of sequels. Continues on. Is this a good idea? We have to whether or not it is of sequels. It is not a Michaela's thing. shaking her head. I don't know. It's an idea. Oh, it, it he's giving me side seen. eye. <laughs> it's that good or not, I will continue to do. Okay, well, there you go. Sounds so, about right. I like a man who knows his yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't expect anything else from you. No, no. no. We're going with it, uh, whether uh, you listener want it or not. Is it going to bleed into the summer? I don't know yet. I okay. don't know. I mean, Maybe either way, we know it. when it goes away, it will come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, never, no, it's are, never really gone. No, no. Sean's seasons of sequels is like herpes. It will come back. <laughs> it's never really gone. There are so many sequels out there, everybody. Mm-hmm. So many. Mm-hmm. It's and you infin- feel the need to watch all of them. Yeah, it's infinitesimal. Mm. Or infin- infinitum. Yeah, we infinitum we is, this said. Why do you choose the sequel and not the actual the film? Well, I mean, obviously, in tonight's situation, we have watched the original, but sure, sure, sure. What, what is the appeal of the sequel? Because we all know the originals. Like, those are well-known entities out there in the world. So I want to know, when you have a well-known entity such as RoboCop or any of the other movies we've chosen, what can you do beyond that? Where mm. can you go? When you get movies that are, in the case of RoboCop, arguably, I would say, almost a perfect movie, to me, where do you go from there? Especially in this case, when you get a franchise that's done many sequels, many offshoots, what ground can you cover? Mm-hmm. I want to discover those areas. Is that's it good? Right. Is it bad? Like, do we find areas that are just like, that's interesting to go with these characters? I want to know, Colin, and I want to go back <laughs> so and watch is, them. Is your question ever, was it necessary? I mean, that's always part of it. Okay. Like, should we have gone here? Okay. Like, why did we continue to go here? Mm-hmm. We did a sequel, then we did another sequel. Right. Why do we keep going? Should we have stopped? Money. Is where well, that's well, always yeah. money is a big part. Of it. Well, money is always the the yeah. the motivating factor. But like, I always like appreciate the point of view of the writer, right? Mm. Who somebody at a studio says, "God damn it, RoboCop made a ton of money. We got to keep milking this." And so you, Michaela, what do you think? You got you got an idea for a ro? How do we keep this going with RoboCop two? Yeah. And then you have to go like, well, fuck. <laughs> I guess Which I gotta find every, out if there's something. Every <laughs> single conversation starts. Like, <laughs> yeah, fuck. Yeah. Uh, Some guy going like, "No, yeah, I can totally do it." Shit. Mm. <laughs> what Where else can, can you do? That first movie was basically like a self-contained story. It had yep. a beginning, a middle, middle, and an end. It's done. Maybe it doesn't. It's need over. <laughs> that was the story. But here we have. But a sequel is forced upon us. Yeah. So tonight's movie was. Uh, RoboCop 2. From the year. 1990. And directed by. Irvin Kirshner. Irvin Kirshner. Irvin Kirshner. Who directed one of the greatest movies ever made. Empire Strikes Back. Really? Yeah. 
Huh. He did. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, are you questioning whether he directed no. it or whether it's one of the greatest? No, movies I'm just ranked. like uh, you know, in in my mind, like George Lucas takes credit for everything. So mm. I just when I hear anyone else's name attached to Star Wars, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. He doesn't mm-hmm. do everything like he claims he does. No. Right. Yeah. Irvin Kershner. The only mm-hmm. other thing that I've seen that he's done was Never Say uh, Never Again. Yeah. The yeah. James the the unofficial James Bond movie, and that's a whole other story. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it has are, Sean Connery in it, but right. it's not an official James Bond. Why is thing. it not official? Just if we can get to that without having there to go into it. There was a rights issue. The guy who wrote Thunderball, mm-hmm. like somehow owned the story to Thunderball. Mm-hmm. And he so it's Never Say Never Again based on anything? That... It's a remake of Thunderball. Okay. But wow. then, yeah, and so it's like, because I, I think Roger Moore was James Bond officially at that time. Uh-huh. And so they got Sean it's Connery to back come in. back for it. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, the history of James yeah, Bond it's crazy. is crazy. That yeah. guy tried to do it again during the Pierce Brosnan era. He wanted to make another, he wanted to remake Thunderball again. <laughs> Kevin he just, he's like, Jesus. I really like this story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he's so got he's dibs like the, on. He's the George Lucas of James Bond, is what you're saying, remaking the same story until it's he, perfect well, in the way he wants it. Huh? But also, he can make more money if he just keeps making the Thunderball yeah. story. Yeah. Just well, like, he uh, can't do anything else. That's the right. only one that he owns. It's right. a legal loophole. That, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, we can make it again. Uh huh. Uh yeah um so this movie comes to us so the first movie was directed by Paul Verhoeven yes right it became a science fiction classic mm-hmm. and a box office hit I think or a sleeper hit I care it seems to me the first one was fairly popular yes popular and successful this one actually was also did very well I remember yeah. I saw this I was sixteen and I saw it its opening weekend in the nice. theater nice um. The but the writer here it's not Edward Newmeyer no. and uh, what was the other fucking guy and those guys went off they did RoboCop and they also did uh, Starship Troopers for yes. Paul Verhoeven this is from a different writer yes pair uh, of writers uh, well originally um, Frank Miller who's he Frank Miller is a comic writer who's known for uh, I mean he's known for Sin City there you go mm-hmm. is the big one yeah um, I. I'm not too sure what he he did. Also, he did Batman, uh, mm-hmm. he did the Batman, the Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, the mm-hmm. revisionist Batman. Yes. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, the old grizzled Batman. Yeah, old yeah. Grizzled, that allegedly like, Batman uh, versus mm-hmm. Superman is very, very, very loosely based right, on. Yeah. The right. Yeah. Right. Fighting all that stuff. So yeah. He three and three hundred is three hundred. Three hundred. And he also had a run at He's the directed. spirit. Mm-hmm. Run at the spirit. Yes. He's, Which he's co-directed some things. Well, he co-directed, yeah, because I Sin mean, City. later uh, when Robert Rodriguez made Sin City, he brought Frank Miller on because that movie is like a you know like shot for shot mm-hmm. adaptation of the the Sin City novels right. or the comics. Um, so then that gave Frank Miller the confidence to say, and they've done three hundred, obviously with Zack Snyder. That gave him the confidence to go <laughs> the off false make, confidence to go make the spirit. The I spirit. totally forgot that was a movie. The spirit. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I completely forgot that existed. Horrible. Completely <laughs> forgot about it. Until <laughs> just, <laughs> was it yeah. Army yeah. Hammer? Who's the Who's the I spirit? Th- who? I, I don't know. think so. Scarlett Wasn't Sam Jackson in that Sam movie? Sam Jackson yes. and Scarlett Johansson are in that movie. Yeah, but who's the spirit? I Ooh. can't remember. It's not Maybe it's not. Army Hammer, Hammer would do a movie like that. He 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 makes bad choices. For such a for a guy who I like, <laughs> kind of want to watch do things. He makes terrible he makes choices. Some bad choices, but he makes some good ones. He's too. made did a couple see, good ones. Did you guys see Sorry to Bother You? Yeah, no. I did. Uh, I hated it, but I, I loved it. him. He's <laughs> he's not afraid to make a bold yeah, choice. Yeah, I hated that movie, but he was my that's favorite his part problem. Of it. That's yeah, his right. problem. That's his problem. Lone Ranger. Yeah, I was gonna right. say Lone <laughs> Ranger. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's his problem is that he he needs to be a little more. I also, but I really, I really loved Man from Uncle. I did too. Uh, that movie was really like that movie was really like, fun. Yeah, I really liked that movie. Fire, which he's good in that. Yeah. We're gonna have to do the actor. army hammer math off yeah. my right? and figure <laughs> out if he's good or not. Right. Do a pros and cons is. list. Yeah. yeah. Right. Is this like the is Hillary Hillary Swank hot? Is this yes, like yes, yes. Is Army yes. Hammer good? Is Army Hammer a good actor? Yeah. I'm Listener, pro- tell us what you think. Are you pro or con Army Hammer? I'm I mean, pro let's, Army Hammer. Let's not forget his uh, stint glasses. on Gossip Girl. Yeah. Well, the Winkle glasses. The Winkle glasses. The Social Network. Yes. Um. Okay, so Frank Miller wrote this film, but oh, you know who else wrote it? Uh, oh shit, the guy's Gabriel named... Mott. Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel Mott. Yeah. Yeah. Is the spirit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even uh, remember who? what that he, guy. He uh, he is from. Oh, was he on Suits or? Oh, suits. Jesus. yeah, yeah. It's suits. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I never watched that show. He is but suit. In he's, suits. <laughs> but he's he's cute. <laughs> all right that's all i got about go. gabriel I mean, that might be his only thing it's just like yeah he's cute he's cute well, yeah, that's all i, I looked up the other writer on this it seems like it's walton goggins but that's not it's right walt it's, something yeah walton somebody 
that guy wrote The Wild Bunch, which is oh. one of the greatest movie westerns ever made, like a revisionist western mm-hmm. uh-huh. that's ever been made. So you have those, the guy who wrote The Wild Bunch and the guy who created Sin City, and they're writing RoboCop 2. This cannot fail. This is going to be the greatest well, RoboCop's kind of like sequel. a gunslinger. We can't lose. No, <laughs> but you made. can, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can't lose, but maybe <laughs> but you, you might. can. <laughs> uh, Everyone loses at some point. Well, what's the uh, okay? So, so, but there is a story here, if I am not mistaken, about Frank Miller and the robot. We'll decide if you are okay. Mm-hmm. About a story. You, you tell me what mm-hmm. it is. This is your movie. You got you looked up the history on this. I, well, sure. Yeah. Have you read the comic book? No, Frank Miller's uh, yeah. RoboCop. No, I did a little research on it um, because uh, Frank Miller originally wrote the script for this, but the, everyone decided this is unfilmable. And, they say uh, that about everything he writes. Yeah, but he literally everything he writes. Alan Moore, just like we can't film this. Well, yeah, but Alan Moore, it's because of like the concepts and the subjects and how Frank dense Miller. It is. I think was not a co- you know it's like you're, you're taking a guy out of comics and saying now write a film and he I think that he didn't understand the structures of screenplay right. writing at that point in time so he gave them something that was like 500 pages or something right. like that it's like no 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 you gotta understand like it's a page per minute is the general you right know. Pa- you gotta pare it down it's <laughs> like nah this is a story it's like well we're not doing it. Yeah, so we're gonna have another writer come in and uh, change a lot of this, and uh, we're gonna make that into RoboCop too. But it seems to me that some of the discarded concepts, if I have this right, were used in RoboCop Three. Yes, indeed. So basically, uh, Fred Decker's RoboCop Three, as it were. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. From Night of the Creeps and the Monster Squad, right. to RoboCop Three, and then uh, he was a writer on last summer's The Predator. Exactly. Um. RoboCop has a uh, uh, a lineage to say, or to say the least, or anything, because it's you know it's got the directors, it's got the writers coming into it, so it's got something going for it. There's really like no no name people like getting into it. I mean, it it gets diminished as you keep going on. RoboCop three doesn't even have Peter Weller in it at that point, but yeah, it's Robert it's got, Burke, Robert John Burke. Yeah, so, yeah, I think so. It's got some pedigree to it at some point. Yeah, Nancy Allen's in all three of them, but then she's and then barely in the third. There's movie, like yes. Robot Ninjas. Yeah, robot ninjas, man. Which are, Woo! of course, like you know, they're humans, but they're robots. Why didn't right? we watch that? Yeah, one? I'm. Uh, because well, I don't. <laughs> That's a sequel, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, as much as like that, probably should have been what we watched tonight. Like, I don't, I don't think I can make the jump to RoboCop three <laughs> without doing two. So, <laughs> oh, oh really? Okay. Now, so I'm laying the tracks for RoboCop <laughs> three in a year. Okay. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> For next spring of sequels, right? Exactly. We'll 2020. get there. Like we have to baby. It's baby steps. You know, oh. I'm doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> Laying a foundation. I like this. It's a logical approach to building. Right. The- we'll get there. Yeah. I have a we'll hard time, time believing there's that much of a through line between these movies that that's yeah. necessary. Aside from RoboCop, mm, it gets tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah because tough. Omni Consumer Products is still taking over Detroit, still. and somehow they have to bring in robot ninjas. I can't remember the exactly. <laughs> But why not? There's, Robo- <laughs> there's Robo Ninjas, there's jetpacks. It's, yeah. uh, there's jetpacks? Right. Yeah. Jet- God oh, damn yeah. it, Sean. I know, right? It is a, it's a far more ludicrous sequel. <laughs> um, this is this tends to be more of the themes and uh, from the first one. Like, it continues on from that. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, I, it's arguably you could say there's a lot of the similar stuff from the first one that end up in this one. Like, the story of, you know, it's RoboCop has got to fight a big robot throughout the movie. Once we get What's there. What's he called? Uh, RoboCop 2. <laughs> RoboCop, the sequel. See, again, this is where I see that guy in the, you know, it's like, you got to do RoboCop 2. Well, we're going to have two RoboCops, Robocop. and it's going to be a literal RoboCop 2. Right. Yeah. They need to work on their design work for these things. That looked like a very first draft prototype. They're not, they're not, they don't do well. It's just like you made, it's like they, they pared it all down to like kind of the perfect thing they can make. And then after that, they're just like, ah, uh, don't Same care. Same with what? The, with the first with, RoboCop. With, with RoboCop versus like RoboCop 2. Just design wise. They're all just like uh, bigger. Because they went, well, they went Ed 209 and then went mm-hmm. RoboCop. And they're just like, let's go back to Giant Robot, mm-hmm. which does not make sense. It looks like the Iron Giant, basically. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Iron Giant mixed with Ed 209. It's like the Giant Robot that doesn't make sense in something that you want policing your neighborhoods. Because God forbid anything is indoors. 
Right, yeah. Because yeah. it's not going to be it can't go it through can't get a door. Right. Yeah, no. it, well, it just blasts them right. down. Right, just go through a door. Just mm-hmm. like their version of like um, uh, policing areas is just like uh, uh, shoot it. Mm-hmm. That is already like that's how we shoot crime is how we stop. <laughs> this yeah. is the martial law RoboCop, but like yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. which is what uh, Detroit has devolved into at yeah. this point, which is why they feel they need RoboCop two and just giant robots. To well, police in the some city. ways, the best sequence of the movie. I thought was probably the opening, uh, you know, after the, 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 you know, the satiric, uh, satiric, sorry, yes. satiric like ads that mm. they carry over from the first movie. The movie's interrupted by all these like uh, just ridiculous uh, future ads. But then there's <laughs> this like, I don't know, five minute sequence, which I mean, it's so on the nose, but it's also maybe like, you know, to introduce RoboCop, mm. it introduces the world of RoboCop, which is basically a long tracking shot where you see, you know, like uh, people shooting up with drugs. They got their babies and cribs with them. There's uh, graffiti all over the place and crazy neon lights. We see a bag lady, you know, with a with a cart full of cans getting hit by a car and they go all over the place. Guy comes running up to help her. He robs her. He runs off. He gets attacked by two hookers. They rob him. <laughs> and there's an explosion and people are robbing gun stores, just shooting people. And it's like, wow. Yeah. The world has gone <laughs> To hell. This is mm-hmm. Detroit in the year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a war zone. Yeah. 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 Because the cops are on strike. Uh, this was threatened in the original Robocop. And so now it's actually come to fruition. Yes. Police are on strike because the city's bankrupt because they've entered into a contract with uh, Omni Consumer Products, which is a corporation that built the Robocop. And uh, they want to default on the city's loan so they can basically take over the city of Detroit. Yes. Kind of like a corporate takeover, except uh, with government. Right. They that whole concept, uh, yeah. I was like, eh, this is not like a bad idea or it's, to or, go after in a movie. Or, you know? Right. And it's also like, looking back, and it's not out of the realm of possibility of things that could happen right now. Like, it feels like they could do that, bankrupt the city just to privatize it and do what they want with it. Yeah, so then you can raise right. the entire thing and build a utopia yeah. in its place. Yeah. That's Delta the, City? Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. They never called it Delta City. Not in this one, one no. Mm-hmm. Just in the first one. Yeah. So that's been the long, uh, you know, the villain uh, plot. The old man, yeah. OCP trying to do all this stuff. Yes. And in this uh, morass of human depravity, there is the Shining Knight. Robocop. The blue shiny, the blue night. shiny night. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, right. He's Robocop. got a he's got a blue makeover in this one. Yeah, for yeah he does. Holly was it Holly we were saying mm-hmm. possibly because it gives him a you know, then he's a boy in blue. Yeah, he he's one, of the, one, one that, of the boys yeah. in blue. Yeah. Is it cop? Cops yeah. wear like that dark navy blue suit. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, that's what yeah. cops wear. Blue blue Robocop. Yeah, I mean he's it, very blue. I mean he was pretty. Mm-hmm. And very shiny. Very shiny. Yeah, very it always shiny. amazes me because you know you're looking at like painted rubber or something. Like there's no hard surfaces on pl- that. At right? least plastic. It's plastic. That's plastic. Yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah, say, oh, yeah, I'd say plastic. That's definitely plastic. Okay. Because but I also noticed a lot more um, spaces in the armor where you know he's just his got whole torso is yeah. exposed here, basically. And then I could see a sleeve, mm-hmm. and then there's a piece for the arm, and there's a little sleeve around the neck. Like mm-hmm. it's it's noticeable where the separation is. In this yeah, one. like a stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Peter Weller, Weller plays the character. I know that he, he, he did a bunch of uh, mime work uh, prior to taking the original Robocop. But, right. I mean, watching it now, there was kind of, I was taken by like the, my God, this thing is so slow and ponderous. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the it's way that it moves because he's supposed to be, you know, this machine, but it's a machine of like the way that no, the world in 1990 envisioned the future. Right. Yeah. It's like before the iMac. You know, before the iRobot <laughs> yeah. uh, robot sure. or, you know, all this stuff. So he's very clunky. Before and anything heavy was and... smooth, it was always just like body. Yeah. It's, it's, and like, it's, like, it's like Mr. Roboto. Like it's, yeah. 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 It is. He's doing the mime of the, what's the classic robot mime, I suppose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what would you think of the design of, okay, so the the first RoboCop was designed by uh, Rob Bottin. Rob Bottin's a makeup effects guy who's done tons of stuff, werewolves and the howling and, you know. The thing. Uh, and, and yeah, yeah, I mean, he's uh, well known. He worked with Fincher for a, a bunch of stuff. But he um, designed RoboCop. I think Ed 209 might have been designed by Phil Tippett, who did a lot of. Uh, I think so. Phil Tippett was the stop animation yes. guy. It used to be there was Ray Harryhausen, right? Was the guy who yes. did all this kind of you know the Clash of the Titans. And and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But in later day, you had whoever, Stan Winston or somebody did the Terminator robot, yep. right? In the end of the first Terminator. Yep. And this is like one of the last uh, stop motion. Feels like it. Movies. It yeah. feels like, right? Yeah. Feels like it. Because there's a lot of stop motion there in this. There is. I was surprised. For 1990, this is in the age where like the abyss is out at this point, right? Yeah, it's very true. And Terminator 2 is next year. Yes. <laughs> so... I mean, I appreciate it for that because I, I kind of like it feels like I'm just a, a a nod to old school shit that they have so much stop motion in this movie. Um, But I liked it, though, because it's the only way I guess they can render That's RoboCop yeah. 2. What do you yeah. think of the design of RoboCop 2? Again, it's not it's not, not great. Colin. It's not well it refined. It doesn't feel logical. <laughs> no. And what they've already done. Like the one, the failed RoboCop 2s that they came up with mm-hmm. that killed themselves in that very, um, <laughs> my favorite montage where they're just unveiling. I, I love it when they, uh, when there's multiple uh, blast doors that have to open up to reveal a thing. And that's what happens in this one. So it's like, this separates, this separates. And they all come out and introduce themselves and they all commit suicide. Yeah. Uh, as they're introduced because they, you know, they're tortured and don't want to be there. But, uh, then they end up some utilitarian design of some big bulky thing, scrawny small legs to hold up this big hulking frame of arms and head and everything. It doesn't seem logical that they should or would go that way. Well, even because like there's something to, I mean, this is basically the cousin of Ed 209. Yes. It seems like an Ed 209 is at least, you know, that's something that I think like, you know, you see it once and you could probably sketch that thing out, you know, in mm. some way you remember what Ed 209 right, looks yeah. like. But, I mean, I just saw RoboCop 2, and, like, I mean, it's got a big, bulky, you know, uh, upper torso. It's got a screen on the front. It does it? It comes out. Yeah. Yeah, Because it has, like, this blast shield uh, thing Uh, that opens up on the the screen. Yeah. Yeah. It has one three-clawed hand. Mm -hmm. But it has guns that just kind of... Right. It's got one arm that's got, like, a... a, a arc welder on it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's got one arm that's got a machine gun and a, a... it looks like a chainsaw at the end of it. It's, its torso is so much bulkier compared to its legs and its arms. Yeah, like it's got a really it's, like it's hunchback odd. kind of like it profile. Be that way. Yeah, it's Again. it's very unrefined. It's very first draft of right. Yeah, my it prototype. doesn't have a good. I always look at like a design for either a monster or a robot or whatever. It's like it has to have a good like silhouette, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you silhouette that thing, that you'd be able to like you know I what will it see is. that no matter where that thing is, I can recognize it. Mm-hmm. Right. When this one's like a bunch of shit stuck together yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah, odd I mean, angles and cha- it feels like there's chains moving on it and like it feels like you can see the moving parts which is what you shouldn't see on a machine like this because mm-hmm. it feels like it'd be able to just like uh, aim at them and take them off and you know so it's not a well designed robot it yeah. looks like if a junkyard came to life like it's it it like it every, all the random crap in a junkyard yeah. formed a robot yeah it's yeah, it's not great. Even well, in RoboCop one, you they had that that image, the silhouette image at one point where he steps in front of his car and the headlights are on, and just like eh, that's. Well, RoboCop. he looks like a, uh, a human, a, a police least, officer. Yeah. yeah, it's a humanoid shape. Right. You know, I mean, he's basically like a, the tin can cop or something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, as ridiculous as it was at the time, and you know, I mean, this is the thing that you know you have to remember when when we first heard the title RoboCop, that sounded like the dumbest fucking thing. <laughs> That you'd ever heard now it you know it's part of the lexicon but right at a time that was like you know like wolf cop it basically that's what it sounded like you know mm-hmm. oh. yeah <laughs> I, see, I always wonder if there was a time that that was a thing where just, oh yeah this is weird because yeah. for me it was always looking at that cover of that vhs going mm-hmm. part man part machine all cop yeah, Robo-Cop. Robo-Cop. i'm just like oh fuck yeah uh-huh. like it was always just i was it was i was accepting of that design from the get-go yeah but also didn't have that introduced to me it was just yeah like, well if the thing. character's cool enough i guess the you know right. you, you forgive a lot and you're just kind of like well yeah it's a robocop sure um, so how do we get to RoboCop 2? I mean, how, how, cause there is a RoboCop 2 in this and the law of sequels says that basically you have to have a bigger, you know, a thing that your hero can fight because he doesn't fight another Well, He does fight Ed 209, I guess, briefly in the first one. That's the bigger, you know, match, mm-hmm. you know, or he's outmatched by that thing. So we got to outclass him again, but how do we get there in the story? What takes us to RoboCop 2? How do we get there? Well, we end up we come into the movie uh, um, where we're reintroduced to RoboCop as you are because if we're going to do a sequel, you have to like meet your main character again, uh, as it were. Um, and we meet RoboCop 
where he's kind of, it feels like he's reverted back to the RoboCop of old in this movie. He's more mechanical, more machine. He talks like he did earlier in the first RoboCop movie. Um, so it's kind of a regression for him, and we don't know why. Um, we do eventually find out why. Uh, but, like, you have to kind of mentally fill in that gap between the first movie and this movie. It's like, well, he got there, but why did he get there? Yeah, because the first movie... Like, how saying, did he get recaptured by OCP, it feels like? Yeah, because he had the whole uh, voyage that he goes through, the yes. journey that he goes through in the first one is basically, you know, he's this cop who's killed and then encased in technology, and so he has to try and find his humanity again. Yes. And by the end of the movie, it's basically like, I've gotten rid of all this shit. Right, he, and had, found, he does. He found his humanity. Yeah, I'm Alex Murphy. Now we got to break that because we got to make a sequel. That's exactly the reason <laughs> That's why. That's the reason why. <laughs> we just got to start him back off again. Right, we got to start him back. He can't be human in this uh, for whatever reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I did like uh, the addition to this movie. Like one of the, the few things early on was that uh, they have like what, you know, since uh, this is the body of Alex Murphy, uh, his wife is still present and still like living in, in Detroit. Right. And, and apparently so he's stalking her. Because he re has these memories. The machine has memories of this woman. And he would, according to our memory of the first RoboCop. Mm -hmm. He remembers everything at this point. Yeah. From but, last we know. But him. she's like, you know, well, I want to go see, is this my husband? Yeah. You know? This is like an interesting kind of dynamic. And then they just kind of, well, we have to deal with that and then throw it away. Yeah, I was like, and they Don't never worry, we'll talk to it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, this is irrelevant. Yeah. Right. That's part of the uh, 20 or 30 minutes of this movie that could have been cut out. Uh, because that's a whole storyline where he, I guess it explains his regression to robot. But other than that, it's just like, why do we have this in here? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, he could have just gone back to being a cop. Like, that was what he knows, and that's what he's going to do. He's he's already RoboCop. Like, what else is he going to do with his life after the first movie? He can't just go back to being, like, a, a, a dad or a regular person. Like, he's got to have some purpose. So I would understand him going back to be like, all right, I'm going to be a cop. But he can still be Murphy as he is at the end of the first RoboCop and go back to being a cop. Instead, they just regress him into a robot and go back through this family thing, which is probably unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Where he's just like, touch me. Well, it's just <laughs> touch my prove, face. to prove to her that like it's cold. You know, I'm, dead, right, I'm not right, your right. husband. Yeah. Even though it's like he clearly thinks that he is her husband. Right. And he just realizes that, you know, and those are interesting things to think about, I guess. And, you know, I mean. People shit all over the 2014 RoboCop remake, mm -hmm. but I actually like that movie. I would probably have liked it better if it wasn't called RoboCop, sure. <laughs> you know, because you bring that baggage to it. But it deals with the, the some of the, those ideas, right. like the whole way through it. Like you know, the wife is there, and you know, it's very true. And he's got a kid, and he's trying to reconnect with the kid, even though he's a uh, who is know. in that one? It's, Joel Kinnaman, yeah, and oh. uh, Gary Oldman and Michael Keaton. And Samuel L. Jackson. Really? Is okay, Jackson so everybody that? that's not RoboCop is a more interesting actor. More, yeah. And uh, yeah. Joel Kinman's not the greatest. No, no. No, I thought he was kind of like milk toast in it. That was right. the, the problem. You need, yeah. the, what's the thing? You need a, it kind of feels like you need a, 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 someone who can be a bigger personality who is then reverted to RoboCop mm -hmm. and then they have to go back and find their humanity from, from a, maybe an actor we already know. Did mm -hmm. they cast him solely based on what his chin looks like in the suit? Maybe. <laughs> Which, I, feel, ironic, I can see that being like, because they a take big the part fucking of it. helmet off like every chance they can. Really, in the, every in chance the they can. Remake. Yeah. I went yeah. back and watched a few clips from him. Just like, wow, he's without that helmet a lot. Man. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. yeah. Interesting. And he never looks as cool as uh, this one. Never yeah. does. They try and recreate it, but it's just like ah, it's yeah. not quite. They're they're even like, let's just go all black just to differentiate him. It's just like not as cool. Yeah. Um, so there's a new cast of characters, the villains in this movie. I mean, mm -hmm. aside from the corporate politics, which are taking place, um, we there's still have, uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, or what do we say his name was? Uh, we figured out the correct pronunciation of, uh, the old man, <laughs> Dan O'Herlithy. Oh, uh, oh, 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 Enemy mine. Halloween nope. three. Oh, oh. Yeah. he was. Huh? He was Connell Cochran or whatever. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. He yes, was he was also on RoboCop, so I think this makes him on the wall. He's on fame. the wall. Yep. Oh, he's on the wall. Congratulations. He's on the wall. <laughs> People have made it to the wall for less. He's actually had like three. BB yeah, but parts. look at those movies, though. You know, like. <laughs> 
Uh, his greatest role is under a ton of makeup in uh-huh. uh, The Last Starfighter. That's oh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. a great movie. Okay. Yeah, that's, a great movie. Like, that's him? But yeah, that's right. him as the... That's the, an actor yeah. right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you look at him in this, that movie, you're just like, what the fuck? All right, yeah. he gains a, a few choice. points for that. All right, yeah. yeah. So he's Last Starfighter is a solid movie. So. It is a solid movie. He's made it. Um, so, well, I mean, I guess the... the Drugs are terrible. Oh, and, yes. And yeah, a scourge I mean, of the nation. Yeah, Detroit is it's the ni- okay. It's the 90s. You have to say it. Yeah. Right? That's right. Yeah. They have this to. is your brain on drugs. Yeah. And this is the war on drugs. That's and right. Everything. But we've created a new drug. And we have many questions. And it's called Nuke. <laughs> and uh, what does it do? I Did I miss that? Did they explain it and I just it missed gets it? You high, Michaela. What does a drug do? But what kind it alters, of high it, is it? It alters it? your emotion, right? Yep. Well, they, they eventually every, say every that emotion? they've come up with four different colors that will okay. do different things to your okay. emotions and everything. Yeah. So some are uppers and some are downers, sure. probably. Yeah. 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 Just to make okay. you feel cool. Yeah, it's blue velvet. The most, okay, yeah. okay. It's the most non like it, you know. If you're gonna be all anti drug, at least tell me why it's bad for me. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's like right, super it addictive. Good. This is yeah, what, but like, if, but if there's no bad side effects to this, who cares it's if it's super, super addictive? addictive? Well, that's the thing. Apparently, your body like craves it, and you can't function, so you will sell your family up the river and yeah. kill people. In order to obtain it, that's sell the downside. Out your, of sell it. out the police force. For I it. just, I never really got a clear idea of like what they're what really, it was. they're really hoping they're like it's drugs. I it, couldn't tell when people were high. Yeah, same. No, no one acted any different. Sweat. I think, I think you sweat they a were, bit more. You they were really, nervous. they were really relying on the whole like all of this crime is happening because of this new drug. Right. Yeah. they were relying heavily on that. That's right, because yeah. people just have to have the drugs, so they're. They're robbing everything. Yes. And, and there's no cops, so they can do whatever the hell they want. Mass right. hysteria. Right. The yep. thing yes. is, though, you make anything that people want to buy illegal, you're going to have that kind of response, whether it's bad for them or not. Didn't Prohibition teach us that? Like, so, I mean, that's why I'm like, tell me why it's bad for you. Say, like, you know, it's going to make your dick fall off or something. Show me something really bad. I would stop using drugs. You know, isn't like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, if you really want me to believe that this is like the end of humanity, show me why it's that bad. I, yeah. yeah. It seemed benign. Yeah. Well, it they were just. Just going off of the, I, I seriously, yeah. I think that's it. It's like yeah. they're just like it's addictive, and that's th- right. as far as they went. But like, like that's of, yeah. awful. But like, like you were saying, people... you can't tell when anyone's high. No one's like meth tweaking or anything when they right. take Even it. Like Kane, he... who seems like a test subject for every new version of Nuke that comes out, he seems fine. Yeah. Who's Kane? Kane He's... is uh, Tom Noonan, who's also making his debut on the Saturday Night Wall of Fame, right? For no, uh... we watched Last Action Hero. He was the uh, the Ripper. Yeah. He was also the Frankenstein monster in the Monster Squad. So he's oh, on the wall. Yeah. Wow. This there movie's putting a lot of people okay. on the wall. Huh? There it is. We got him on the wall. <laughs> Tom Noonan, who was great as the original Francis Dollar Hyde in uh, the first adaptation of Red Dragon Manhunter, which you should check yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, that's he is right. That. I forgot about he's that. Creepy yeah. As fuck. He yeah. is. Yep. Mm. That's a that's a really mm. uncomfortable movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. From front to back. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if nothing else, for the wardrobe. Mm-hmm. That too. Yeah, yep. It's very mm-hmm. Shiny, shiny blazers in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he is like this kind of. Uh, he's the evangelist of Nuke. Yes, mm-hmm. it is a cult. He's the very cult laid Nuke. back. He is a very chill person. Which is it's that <laughs> that chill charisma that is yeah. what gets people to try this Nuke. He's, he is a cult leader. Yeah, mm-hmm. but also a terrorist, according also to uh, mm-hmm. the the media break minutes. Yeah. that we see throughout the movie. The, yeah. Little uh, uh, newscast, yeah. Which I'm told like Lisa to Gibbons is actually also on the Wall of Fame because she was in RoboCop, RoboCop Two, and Last Action Hero. Uh, so wow, so these same Everybody. three movies trade all yeah. a lot of actors. Thank huh? you, MF Mad, for <laughs> as the keeper of the uh, wall. Watcher talking, on the wall. She goes on the the Hallway of Fame. I think. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. so. Yeah, I would agree. Um. But so he so he's a terrorist. They blow stuff up. They're basically awful people who run these uh, drug factories. Pardon me. Kane is surrounded by uh, his, uh, you know, little inner, inner circle, the most prominent of which is like a 10 year old kid named Hob. Yes. Who says fuck all the time because, you know, I mean, because when you kids have kids. saying fuck was, uh, I mean. In when, you're tw- when you're 12, that's the only way to show that you're tough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Why does no one put him in his fucking place this whole movie? Right. He's, yeah. a, he's a minor. That's my question. I'm like, is he some sort of super genius that knows something that we don't? Because there's there's nothing given to him that shows his importance to this group. Aside from, he's a kid. 
That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing well, except, else. Well, he he acts like an adult, I suppose, in some way because sure. he swears. So I think slap it's him around yeah. a little He's bit. He's still but fucking he'll minor. Kill you. He is a stone cold uh, killer. Sure. Which yeah. is why I always had a problem with this movie where it's disingenuous by the end when he uh, gets killed. His murder. Yeah. His death scene. His yeah. Death and Robocop scene. comes up to him. He's, of course, tried to kill Robocop. He's tried to saw Robocop in half and take him apart and all this other shit. Uh, but at the end, when the kid gets killed, even though he's had no remorse for anything that he's done, right, uh, is, has this like touching his, death scene. His death betrays his character. I think, like, it's not. It's so he not, always it, was just this little frightened kid, but he was pretending to be. Sure, I mean, maybe you get that when uh, when the cop is being killed in front of him, and he looks away, and he can't take it, and he's made to look at it. He's 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 hardened by other people. He's forced into the he's forced into the life he leads, right? Uh, I felt like this was all his choice. I felt like he kind of made he, his bed. I mean, so he, he went into all that's why it. I say his death scene is disingenuous. Yeah. Because it doesn't add up to the rest of him. Uh-uh. Like he's a, he should just be like, fuck the world and then just yeah. fucking die off. That's what should have happened to him. Because yeah. like but we're I don't, supposed to have I don't sympathy feel for him at that. Yeah, I'm like, I don't feel sympathy, don't for, feel him. sympathy for See, this because, guy because he's well, an asshole. Part of it is because I don't know who I was supposed to feel sympathy for for the entire movie. Yeah. I don't know who I was supposed to relate to. I I don't even know, dude. So this yeah. is a good point. If you yeah. create a dystopian movie where basically all oh, of the people sorry. are being hor- like all the people are horrible. Well, okay. The uh the Nancy police Allen's not chief. horrible, but she's also not in this movie. She's, yeah, she comes back in this movie and I swear I cannot remember if she had five lines of dialogue in it. Barely. And barely has a part, barely shows barely. up. Barely. Um because I mean her position is supposed to be I think being a sounding board to uh you know robocop right right but that's completely absent from this movie other than like well she's in it and she yep. there she is that's it uh the police captain returns from the first movie but yep. like he doesn't have anything to do you know except to step step up for his officer yeah. when ocp is like it's just a machine he's like it's one of us you got to put them back together. That's yeah. it. That's all that he does. That is the total mm-hmm. of what he does. But all the corporate people, aside from maybe, what's his name, Jenkins or something like that, is Johnson. the only one at Johnson, yeah. who is a carryover from the first Johnson. movie. Special Agent Johnson. He seems to have a little bit of like uh, an idea of what's right and wrong. So there's these little pockets here and there of like people who maybe, but everybody else is so completely self-obsessed and just nihilistic as yeah. all hell. Uh, that it's like, who are we supposed to root for? I guess the answer to that, Holly, is the obvious. You're supposed to root for RoboCop. All right. I guess so. Yeah, we're supposed to. <laughs> and at one a point, man who's lost and at his one humanity. point, RoboCop just like disappears for like 20 minutes. Was that when they replaced him with a puppet? Yeah. Okay, so this ah, brings me to, to one of the biggest problems with this movie is uh, RoboCop does uh, try to uh, you know stop the gang. They capture him because magnets, it turns out, are the uh, the kryptonite to Robocop. Sure. Magnets, bitch. And uh, so they end up tying him down and cutting him up into a bunch of pieces and then dumping him in front of the, the police officer. Mm-hmm. Always focusing on the crotch, as it were. Mm-hmm. They and use the, the junkyard magnet to lift him up. Yeah, that's that what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 junkyard yeah, yeah. magnets. Uh, <laughs> there's a jackhammer employed at one point. Yeah. Uh, that, made of titanium or something. That sure. scene when they're carrying him on the magnet goes on for really long, though. Yeah, and I was like, this is, I don't think it's supposed to be funny, but it was funny to me. <laughs> there are many scenes that just, like, eh, we're going on a little too long. Yeah. Let's, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's well, the down. movie is like two hours. It is. It's overly long. It's yeah. a long movie. Huh? Um, but he is disassembled and then thrown in front of the police department. They take him in, and then there's some, like, are we going to put him back together again? Or I'm, you know, OCP's like, no, whatever. whatever. Right. They put him back together again. Uh, but Peter Weller's out of the movie for this long stretch where you're dealing with this puppet, which I actually thought was kind of cool. That it's they, a cool puppet that they did, you know, from a, an effect standpoint, yes. mm-hmm. which is yeah. something you don't Effects see them wise, do yeah. anymore. I'll Effects wise, I'll give you that. Very good. But the character movie. is not like he is in a coma or something, right? Yeah. And so you have all this kind oh. of bickering amongst a bunch of people <laughs> that you don't really like or care for. And then. They come up with the idea to pacify RoboCop because now that we have him apart, we can reprogram him. And this becomes like this subplot to the movie that seems to go on forever mm-hmm. yep. where they pump him through, you know, because RoboCop, he just wanders in and shoots people. Well, right. wouldn't it be better if we get a 
input from a whole board of directors and they say, well, you know, we need more directives for him besides the uh, three or four we had before three yeah. as it was at the beginning of this movie. Yeah. I mean, it's protect the public good, uphold the whatever. And, you know, right. don't don't kill anybody. And, then, you know, whatever. <laughs> the prime directive. Uphold the law. And, uh, uphold the law. And in this one, he has like uh, 300 and some odd directives, uh, all of which are supposedly giving RoboCop like a complex because he can't possibly uh you know like may do them all. I, may i name some of them for sure. you sure some of some my of favorites which some of them are very great we get some Please. as like uh restrain hostile feelings promote positive <laughs> attitude which sure uh promote social uh pro social values uh be accessible <laughs> uh participate in group activities uh avoid premature value judgments <laughs> pull opinions before expressing yourself discourage feelings of negativity and hostility don't rush traffic lights. <laughs> Don't run through puddles and splash pedestrians or cars, which is uh, one of my favorites. That's a good one. Uh, don't don't say that you are always prompt when you are not. Don't be <laughs> don't be don't be oversensitive to the hostility and negative of others. Uh, don't walk across a ballroom floor swinging your arms. <laughs> <laughs> which that's Directive Two Fifty, and it's my favorite. Oh, wow. Uh, well, basically, else. talk things out. Avoid Orion meetings. Oh yeah, which is, you know, this movie. yeah. Uh, Number two sixty six. Smile. Yeah. This sounds like basically, so they make a politically correct RoboCop yes. for all intents and purposes. And uh, much like it does in humans, having all these directives leads to him like uh, just going completely crazy. Right. And so this leads to a bunch of scenes where we see RoboCop 20 minutes worth. lecturing children on uh, the importance of not swearing. Not swearing. Uh, Being good to your community. Not making a mess. Yeah. 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 Turning off fire hydrants sure. and just be, basically waste, being the yeah. death of fun. Waste not, want not. <laughs> like when he's <laughs> given the rights to the dead guy and he's like, I'm, I'm having trouble. I am having trouble. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Peter Weller performs like, I could have well. got it from that right there mm -hmm. alone Yeah, and not gone on for the next 15 minutes to figure oh, yeah, out yeah. there's a get problem. It. We get it. But it seems like his priorities are all out of order too, out because of order, he's yes. all overloaded with the stuff. He's focusing on all the like most minor infractions right, you could is, possibly have, which is a great idea. Yeah, but you're checking yourself right. on so many things that you can't. This, the, the idea is that the simplicity of RoboCop and those four prime directives, mm -hmm. or the three prime directives, which are basically coming from Asimov's uh, three laws of robotics. Right, yeah, right. It's I like he, he went uh -huh. and figured all this out. And that these are basically, once you have these in place, this makes you a decent person and you make your own judgments after right. that. Or at least a decent cop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, to have all of this other stuff, like, it runs you into, uh, you know. Uh, right. You're just running in circles. Yeah. Doing nothing at that point. And so we get that for far too long. Because this culminates in a scene where uh, after he shuts off a water hydrant where kids are just playing in the, you know, harmlessly playing with the, the water, they spray paint... Uh, kick me on his back and all this other stuff. And the problem I have with this, uh, it, like narratively, isn't so much the, the concept of the idea. Cause I mean, I think what we were just talking about, that's what they were, the illustration of what they were trying to do, yeah. but it ridicules and it mocks RoboCop. Right. So much that it's like, why do I, why is this guy a fucking hero? Like, he doesn't even have like a sense of self or anything. Right. Like, it's just a fucking machine that you program and it's basically a big buffoon. He's a real square. Yeah. He really is. <laughs> yeah. Really is. And it's not, I mean, the only reason you're watching this movie, unless I'm forcing you to, there it is. Uh, there it is. <laughs> is because you've seen the first one and you're interested in seeing where the story continues on from where you left off. And we're really going back from where we left the character and where we like the character at that point. To, so to see him doing this stuff and to see people doing this stuff to him is kind of like, it's disappointing at a certain point, I think mm -hmm. like I get like you can do it uh, and get the point that he's been messed with. And this is where he's ended up, but they just keep like fucking going, driving it home for like way too long. Yeah. Which is the problem. Well, whose fault is this? Uh, not in the writer. I was I'm saying the, the writer. Uh, yeah. The writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, in the in the plot in uh, the movie, the plot, Who, yeah. like OCP has decided. But specifically, the uh, new character to this movie, the shyster. No, the doctor. Whatever, Doctor Facts. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Her. 
Dr. Fax is a psychologist. See, th- this movie is making some kind of like, <laughs> it's a satire. Sure. It is making some point, yeah. which I appreciate, but it's like the execution, right? It yeah. <laughs> maybe misplaced. But uh, Dr. Fax is a psych- is either psychiatrist. I think psychologist. And she's been brought on by OCP, specifically the old uh, guy the old who man. has been yeah. running the company, to shepherd the development of RoboCop 2 because the scientists have fucked it up because only Alex Murphy, somehow driven by a sense of duty, is able to overcome death and become like a good cop. Right. All these other cops that they put in and become suicidal. So she has been tasked with finding the correct uh, temperament, will, brain. Yes. Right? That you can use to build a RoboCop. They want to find too. something they can control is basically what they're going for. She's got to figure out what's the best option for that, the best person uh, and the best ways to control it. And who does she come up with, Sean? She comes up with uh, our uh, cult leader, Kane. Now, she figures out is okay. the best <laughs> way to do this. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> does this seem like a good idea? Not really. I mean, are you asking me an honest I, question? I, I am. Is this I like... didn't think bringing this movie was a good idea, Sean. <laughs> oh. did, you, did you think that before or just during the movie? We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> That's right. You got to stay tuned for the wrap yeah. ups where everything will come out in the wash. Mm-hmm. But as a character motive, I mean, like, this is like. No, that's the thing. I don't understand why she picked him. If I, need... I still don't. Is it kind of like the idea that, like, you know, you always hear that, like, thing that the government hires hackers to create, like, sure. s- security software because right. they're the people that will know how to, like, its yeah. weaknesses. Is that the thought here? That, like, we I don't get feel, a cult I leader. Do that. I, I don't think they're thinking that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like, think that I like our attribution to it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, because I still don't understand the logic behind that choice. I think it's movie. just because they come down to something they think they can control. Because but that they have a overrides thing that, they have a thing that it wants. Yeah, but the nuke. What, <sighs> you're trying to make a law, a pacification <laughs> officer, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, a law enforcement yeah. officer, and so I'm going to take a, a criminal, but I can control it because it's addicted to nuke. Right. So as long as I withhold the nuke, it will do whatever right. I say. It has no moral compass, right? <laughs> But you want to make this thing the next uh, RoboCop? Sure. This seems asinine. I suppose that's I mean, the whole think, point of the I movie. Think we can all agree it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just didn't buy it. I didn't buy it in 1990, and I don't buy it now. It right? What What didn't make sense is, you know, she was the one that programmed all of like the PC new rules into RoboCop, right? Mm-hmm. She was the one that originally did that. Did that. So now she's like, all right, well that backfired. Let's use a drug dealer. But she you know, intentionally <laughs> did. She intentionally hobbled RoboCop. So the, his failure would allow for the creation oh, of RoboCop true. 2, right. the that's better true. version. You that's know? true. That's right, because there's all this, like, backstabbing corporate, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it's uh, a very machinations movie, yes. going on. Mm-hmm. They seriously thought they could control a robot with a carrot and stick mechanism by it really the is. drugs. That's like... really where they got to, yes. Yeah. yeah. This will work. Uh, I'm glad that in the future yeah. we're right. still also, reverting we're, to we're also going to give it a, the thing we're yeah. controlling with a stick and carrot a big gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and many ways to kill us. Yeah. This yeah. will be fine. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, there's also. Is it fine, Colin? Does it, it end up being fine? Well, well. Before we get there, oh. well, I don't know. I was going to bring up the mayor, but maybe he's like such a oh, minor the character mayor. that uh, yeah. we don't even have to Jeez. because there's. There is a lot of like political, I mean, I, this, not this not is, not like political commentary. Although there's that that's too, supposed to be saying something. in the it's movie. There's a lot more, of politics, right? Like within, not yeah. It's not politically saying anything. There's just a lot of like the politics of the people in the movie yeah. are doing things. Yeah, it's just they could have completely removed the mayor character, and it wouldn't have made a difference at all. He's just basically the spokesperson for old Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Which I don't even know if you need. Well, I mean, I suppose you need somebody. No, it could have been a lawyer. I don't lawyer think it was, don't think it was necessary. Point. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, he so. ultimately his purpose. I mean, I, I'm not even sure. Other than it'd be some kind of like foil to OCP, is which again, I actually thought that this was kind of an interesting. To- I mean, there are interesting things happening in this movie. They're just not executed well. But he ends up siding because. OCP is going to foreclose on the loan and take over the city. Yeah. He ends up siding with the drug dealers because the drug dealers have the money to go like, I'll front you the money 
and then we'll control. <laughs> you right. can get the city back, right? <laughs> because versus they went, OCP. Yeah, because they went from drug dealers to mafia. Yeah, Basically. just yeah. just like but that. Hey, you gotta move up. You can't just stay playing your same game. No, I I life. appreciate them moving yeah. up in life. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should. I, yeah. yeah, upward mobility. Yeah, you gotta climb the ladder. Moving to the ladder. Yeah. And their whole idea then is like basically, you know, you as this mayor with us backing you, crime will go away because we're basically gonna make nuke at some price that's unbelievably cheap, right? And, and we'll make it safer, it and we'll it. just flood the place with it. So. It won't be, uh, we'll take care of crime. It's People a, won't be committing crimes to afford it. It's an interesting element to the movie. Yeah. Executed with yeah. artful precision and delicacy. <laughs> sure, totally. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Holly's <laughs> rolling her eyes over there. <laughs> uh, I, totally well, I, I did. That. I did like Sean's comparison. He was basically like Mayor Goldie Wilson. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. like the yeah, it's the but like obnoxious uh, yeah. and corrupt, it's the corrupt version of Goldie yeah. Wilson. Yeah, I do appreciate really that is. comparison. Yeah. Why was Elvis's body in this movie? Don't know. There, okay. <laughs> Don't yeah. know. There it is. It really takes a stop to look at the exhumed body of Elvis Presley on like a museum display it, in a yeah. warehouse. It, yeah. yeah. I don't under. I really don't understand this. Well, this is Kane's warehouse. So Kane, this, uh, this is that what, rich people just toward, do things like that. Yeah, it's it's trying to establish some type of psychology for him, right? Oh, uh, it does because not do a good job. On the wall, who was it? There was well, Jesus. Re- there was Jesus. He has the Elvis. body of Elvis, like yeah. exhumed in a glass case, and then he's got uh, Oliver North. So somehow between the three of those, we're supposed to uh, wait. Um, get, was. The Iran Contra uh, yeah. guy. Yeah, I was like, is it is it like a king thing? Is that what it is? I don't. This is never like, touched is on it, again. <laughs> never. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. trying to find like that's it's such an odd. I mean, I, the movie. <laughs> that's that's the commonality between Jesus and Elvis, the king. That's, yeah, sure. So I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to connect something. And Oliver I North, got nothing. I don't. I got uh, nothing. Yeah, I got yeah. nothing. This guy's so rich, he was able to exhume Elvis's body and buy it. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. keep in his warehouse. Yeah, he looks he like a bomb. I'm sure he just went to eBay and was just like, "We have a certificate of authenticity. This is Elvis." <laughs> Dude, I, I think it's like a Ripley's Believe It or Not closed, and he was yeah. like, "I'll take that and tell sure. everyone it's real." Yeah, right. just exactly. As, yeah, right. As part of the cult thing. He's yeah. just like, yeah. "Look, we look what we have. Uh-huh. We have Elvis's do body. they still have Ripley's Believe It or Not? Yeah, there's yeah, one in Wisconsin do. Dills. Do yeah, oh yeah. yeah, it's in LA too. Dude. Yeah, you should go yeah. check it out. It's, oh, it's actually pretty fun. I have not changed in like thirty years. I was like, I've been to several Ripley's in the '90s when that was like. Oh, the fun thing to do. There, yeah. Wow. They have not changed at all. No. They always had like not a fucking once. Iron Maiden in the corner. Yep. They, oh, yeah. they have a yeah. tor- specific torture section. Yeah. 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 I believe the other oh, one has man. a T-Rex coming out of the roof. Yes. It's a fun time. Guys, we should go on a freak show field trip. <laughs> <I know>. Please. <laughs> because in Wisconsin Dells, you buy a ticket to Ripley's, you also get into Wizard's Wizard Quest. Wizard's Quest, which is yes. way better. Uh, Wizard's let's Quest go. The We're going. We can do that. Um, <laughs> So this leads us to the climax of the movie, which is what we have paid our hard-earned money to see, which mm. is two fucking robots fighting each other. Is it a good idea, I ask you, friends? Ordinarily? <laughs> you cast an actor like Tom Noonan in your movie, and then at about the th- prior to the third <laughs> act, the lawnmower, man? you take him <laughs> out of the movie and have a robot be him instead. Like, what is the point? Like, this kills any momentum that this actor has. They did this with uh, um, Nick Nolte in The Incredible Hulk. I remember sitting oh, there going, yeah, like, turn him in, it's yeah. like, you got actors, and then all of a sudden it's like, now I got two CG things punching each other. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Somehow, I don't, I'm don't. i not able to carry the, dr- the drama, like, from an actor to, like, a CG representation. I don't know. I think it, uh, because Tom Noonan wasn't, he was kind of a cool character in, uh, and by that I mean his demeanor was a cool character yeah. within this. Through most of the movie. Basically, mm-hmm. I kind of like where they took him as far. Like it was more inter- in a in a movie where that character is not very interesting. Uh, I found it interesting that they put him in a fucking machine, and then he was the, the personality in the machine. I was very okay with. Like, I never I got the idea got of, off of the physical guy Tom Noonan that yeah. he was a. Uh, junkie for nuke no not no. that he would be angry mm-hmm. over not having it yeah like there was no there was no aggression from him earlier on that um makes the aggression he feels later as a robot the only the only thing i can think of though Real. is that since he was the one distributing that whenever we saw him it's 
he was never without it, and this was the first time that he was without right. it, and that's why it's different. You know, I, the movie yeah. maybe needed to to display that. In yes, some way. I agree. Right. You know, like earlier on, because I got the idea. Or that even the kid, when he's in the hospital before they take his brain out, his brain and his eyeballs out to put in a robot. Yeah. Which is a, a cool effect, just seeing yeah. brain and eyeballs and spine in a fucking oh, yeah. That's a water sci-fi case. mainstay right it there. Is. That it's was, nice. That was a long pan to really, get to that. It Dude, was. Because <laughs> they showed it at first, and it's very small, and then they do the pan, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, this like, is taking eye, a long time. We know his eyes are there. Yeah. You can get We've to already the, seen at it. the top of this stock. The yeah, stock? It's, yeah, yeah. It's brain almost, stock. It's almost like the uh, Naked Gun 33 and a third, where they're going up, and she has two sets of knees. She's, yes. <laughs> and Nicole Smith, it's like knees. <laughs> Thighs, more knees, and then we finally get up to Anna Nicole's. That's it's, exactly that's what it is. The exact equivalent. Exactly. I'm say. I love Except that. Except not as funny. <laughs> not yeah, as funny. not as funny. No, because they put this thing, the, the brain, into this uh, metal beast, and then him and Robocop have to duke it out in, in the extended stop motion, stop motion uh, mm-hmm. climax. Which I thought was fun, but uh, it took us way too long to get there. I'll say that. There is something to be said about, like, I mean, if, you know, if you enjoy, like, the simple pleasures of stop motion animation and the artistry, it's it's like this really is a showcase of, like, cutting edge, last of its generation uh, stop motion stuff. There's a lot of it in this fight scene at the end where it's actually kind of cool to watch. And, like, it's like, these guys are doing the best work that they've ever done, probably. Yes, I would say. But, uh, yeah, it takes two hours to get there. It takes almost. two hours to get there. And then eventually you rip the the way you beat the thing is by ripping its uh, brain out of its housing. No, with- that's not how you beat it. You yeah. rip it out. And, and that, then that's not enough. That's not enough. You have to well, smash the, the brain right. into the... The creature that's is right. still alive. Remove it's the head alive. and destroy the brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's some kind of telepathy. Yeah. That's a going two on part here. process, Holly. Yeah. And so they had to do in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Remove the head. Destroy, destroy the brain. The brain. Yeah. But it's still functioning without its brain. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's know, still it trying to fight. And every, we don't know yeah. the mechanics no. it takes of it, Why did it need a brain at all? It takes a really long time to power down after it loses the brain. Mm hmm. Like a long time. Because then we have to, and not only is the brain disconnected, then we got to smash, smash the it. brain. Yep. Somehow that will disrupt yeah. the, there's no wires or anything. Mm-hmm. Nope. And this is pri- pre-Wi-Fi technology. Yeah. So well, it's that telepathy. doesn't matter. The technology doesn't have to exist in the real world for real world for it to exist in the movie. There still could have been a connection between the brain and the robot at that point. Why did it need to be in the robot? I don't know. It, See, it these, doesn't don't make, make these sense. Rules. <laughs> these are questions that I think the sequel, the the remake, actually does deal with. It's like how much of the thing is a robot, and how right. much of it is a person. Why do you need any person in it at all? Right. When it's really, you know, why do we need a hand, lungs, and a brain? Yeah. Well, I think that's the difference between the the, the original and the remake. It's it skews that perspective because the first one is basically like a retelling of Frankenstein, right? Yeah. Or something. It's like he's, you know, but somewhere in there there's a humanity and we have to dig it back out. Yeah. But in the new one, it's like he's the a human. inverse. Well, I was gonna say it's a robot and it thinks that it's a human. It's the other way around because oh, there's seems- really there's no person there. It's just thinks that it is. Well, when it starts out, it seems like he's still very human because he's having a really hard time. In which the remake? In the remake. Yeah, then they take him apart and show him. It's like, no, you're not actually there. It's like, yeah, we're we're giving him the illusion that he thinks that he's in control, but it's actually the robot. We're just giving him dopamine injections. I mean, it gets down into like a yeah, it gets in the nitty gritty of sci-fi. You know, like yeah, this is new stuff to think about for RoboCop. Mm. I don't know. I'm telling you, don't dis count the robocop remake it does have some good ideas i discount it okay fine what about uh robocop uh the prime directive series of four movies that were made Uh, for television yes what about robocop the comic book i think i've seen a couple of those the the ones made for tv the prime directive who's in that is that robert burke again i think so it could they could have gone on to another actor i don't know i don't remember enough about them i barely remember yeah. them there's a and lot they of were probably ill uh, ill-conceived many robocop would be and apparently frank miller who was upset was he i don't know he's I, in this I movie, th- he is in this movie. i think he was upset that they did not use his stuff but he is in this movie in a cameo they did eventually adapt his original screenplay as a comic book, mm-hmm. like six issues or something like that. Yeah. And from what I've heard, that's uh, not very good. 
Yeah. I don't think it came across very well. Yeah. I was reading up on those today. I'm just like, this sounds uh, not good. Yeah. I'd right. rather go read uh, Robocop versus Terminator. Tell you the truth. I played that is, video game. Another that, that was, was like a, a video huge game. deal that when was. it came out for like uh, Super Nintendo that or was. something. I remember that. Robocop versus Terminator. Yeah. Because that's something that feels, you know, naturally. I, <laughs> I, like, think it, I think in the comics, they took, a, they took a Terminator and put the Robocop armor on the Terminator to make the ultimate killing machine. It's RoboCop still in the B team, Sean. This is what we really want. Oh shit! I forgot about B team. That's right. Is it B team? <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think we can officially. He's still there. Okay. I think so. This movie didn't help him. Let's put it that way. It's not going to elevate him past where he was. In fact, he may have gone down to the C team at this point. Oh uh, no! I mean, no, no, B team. Yeah. Do people if you show RoboCop to a kid in uh, India? Does he go RoboCop? That was, I think, our criteria. On, like, I, I think it you was. show Superman to a kid in India, he goes, that's Superman. Mm-hmm. Right. You show RoboCop, it's like, does he go RoboCop? No, I think it's mostly out of public, public consciousness at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm there's curious. comic books. I want to see that. All sorts of, I want to see that test. I'm saying he's still B-T. I think we need to. Oh, he's definitely still B-T. No, he's B-T. He's yeah. B-T. I do want to go around the world with a picture of RoboCop and just ask yeah, You people, know what this is? I'll, any, I think you're just going to be disappointed. Any traveling I do from now on, I'm traveling with a picture of RoboCop, yeah. and I'm just going to walk the streets for When a you get to like, Iran, do they know RoboCop? Yeah. I just want to know. I'm uh, curious. Probably not. Well, I'm sure savvy kids everywhere know everything, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. So that brings us to, well, tell you what, listener, stick around, because what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room, and we're going to talk a little bit more about RoboCop 2. You're going to find out... <laughs> What the opinion was. We're gonna find out what Holly thinks of this movie. <laughs> you it's never been know. A mystery so far. <laughs> well, it, because you never know. Somebody, she may love it. Now I'll be surprised. This will be like the moment it all turns. Uh, but first, we're going to read some of your mail because, uh, like I said, we want to hear from you. So first of all, let's call our mailman Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got a little brain with eyeballs attached in his hand. <laughs> oh, I think that's his, like, that's his little pet. Oh, yeah. oh, oh the eyeballs are moving, though. He it's can- like... Guys, he can't be trusted with a pet. It won't be alive this time next week. Is it alive now? <laughs> Is he alive <laughs> now? Yeah, I... right. Who's alive? Is that his brain yeah. eyeballs? We don't. But probably. Sean, you know, we're like when he's sleeping, we're going to replace it with another one and hope he doesn't notice that it's different. You know, <laughs> oh. that's true. <laughs> yeah. And then we have to have the talk about you know so life and death and. Oh, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do it better than Pet Cemetery did. <laughs> right? I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh oh, it looks like my printer is crapping out. So I'll try to read the best Did I can. Did you not notice this before? No, I didn't. But there's like strips <laughs> missing. So here we go. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. Uh, I see well, that. first of all, Look we want to work. Colin. We want to repeat how you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter at Sad Freak Show. By email Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, let's see here. MF Mad wants to, as the keeper of the wall, uh, we've got a couple other uh, Hall of, uh, of Fame inductees. Right. Okay. Ken Lerner, who played, uh, I think he that was a lawyer right. in this, but you'll recognize him because he was also in The Running Man. He got the, Oh, is this the guy with the mustache and glasses? No. Or in The Running the Man, guy? he was used as, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uses him as something to write on and then stabs him with a pen. <laughs> you remember? He's in yes, this. I do remember that. He's, he's, in this. Yeah. he's also the mayor and maniac cop, and he was a doctor in uh, Exorcist Three. <laughs> so there you go. All right, uh, Thomas Rosales Jr., who was Chet in RoboCop Two, he was one of uh, Kane's guys. Was also in The Running Man. He was in Predator that, yes, Two, Last Action Hero, Escape from L.A. It's and a lot Connery. of Sean movies. There's a lot yeah, of Sean movies. Is. I picked it just for that. <laughs> And uh, Roger Aaron Brown, who was a character oh, called yeah. Whitaker in RoboCop 2, he was uh, uh, one of the police officers who actually had a speaking line at the, toward the beginning of the movie. Yes. Uh, I re- remember him as the uh, truck driver in Near Dark, but he was also oh. in Cobra. But I don't remember him in Cobra, oh, but apparently he was in Cobra. I've been, like uh. I said during the movie, I've been watching him a lot lately. I've been watching his TV show, The District, oh, there you go. a lot. So, yeah. Well, about RoboCop 2. Josh Zemer writes in and says, Zemer. Hey everyone. So excited. You're doing this movie. I grew up on all three of these movies and obviously loved the first one the best, but RoboCop two was still a favorite of mine. 
It didn't recapture the satire of the first, but it did have some of the elements of the humor while feeling kind of like an early comic book movie, which is maybe why they got Frank Miller to write it. But I will say the ending fight still holds up pretty well, and the stunts, mainly the chase, are still impressive. P.S. Here is Pickles, your biggest fan, <gasps> posing his dog? with the Scream Factory what? Blu-ray. <gasps> oh, Colin. my God. That Colin. is the cutest <gasps> dog. He says, we are going to try oh. and watch Beep. each movie you review every week, and I will send you a pose of Pickles with the movie, yes. if that's okay. This, with yes. this might be all we ever wanted. It is more than okay. That is going to be my favorite piece pickles? of mail every uh, week. I'm sorry. Send pickles. pictures of your dogs, cats, yes. any, pickles. any hedgehogs, ah. whatever, yeah. that is viewing these movies with you, yes. and please send them to us. I love the name Pickles, too. That's so I, cute. I always wanted a dog named Pickles. Mm -hmm. Well, I love go. that. Thank you. Yeah, th yes. Th sir. So send, send us your pets. Pickles looks so happy in that he picture. He looks so too. happy. <laughs> well, it's uh, because he's listening to the Saturday I Night Freak Show. Oh, I love it. it. Uh, Jacob Laws writes in and says, I actually like RoboCop 2. Yeah, it's nowhere near as good as a part one, but it's not the true abomination that is part three. I like the idea of trying to create another RoboCop. I love the scene where they showed the failed RoboCop 2s, and Tom Noonan has always creeped me out, especially in this and Manhunter. Mm. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Uh, Adam Kaler says, don't get me wrong. I like RoboCop, but he has two major weaknesses. Large magnets. Get him stuck to one <laughs> and never turn off. You can keep him in your living room, Job of the Hut style, or sink him in the ocean. He'll be demoted so fast. He'll be teaching schools of fish the dangers of nuke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man, I wish I could think of a wrap up that good, man. That's great. <laughs> That's some good just, writing right there. Can we just there. end on a high note? <laughs> yes, just end great. there. <laughs> uh, Simon Carter says, I can't say this is a good movie. It has some incredibly dumb shit, giant plot holes, and some weak performances. That said, I enjoy it for what it is, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys all make of it. Well, You'll find out soon. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler says, I love the introduction RoboCop has in this movie. However, the rest of the movie drags on. There are some interesting ideas. Having Robo come face to face with his wife, seeing Robo watching his family, wishing he could be with him. However, overall, it feels like a movie that the studio just messed with and had extensive notes. Honestly, if I had to watch RoboCop two or three, more often than not, I'll watch three as two was a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, nothing will ever outdo Paul Verhoeven's classic movie. I'm excited to hear Sean's thoughts on this, and I often, or and often when it's time for sequels, I feel like we see eye to eye. I can't wait for this podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> it's really hard to follow up a Verhoeven movie, you it, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah he, like, that guy has a distinct style that it's so uniquely his. True. Mm -hmm. any, have you ever seen Starship Troopers? Yeah. Two? Oh, yeah. two, oh, no, two, I think, no. I, wait, I think no. how many of those are three? There? There's four. And what there's really? Four and the animated four ones? and then an animated movie. Oh, Jesus! Yeah. So you're giving there's several animated movies. Yeah. God damn it! You're giving Sean ideas. No, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> I promise you. Summer of Starship Troopers. All right. Thank you. They will not come. Thank you. Jacob Kotner writes in and he says, "Yes, yes, yes." RoboCop 2 is a brutal good time. I love the first film. It stands on its own, and no sequel could ever compare, but I'll be damned if RoboCop 2 doesn't try. While I feel the film lags a bit toward the end, it's well worth your time. The Hob character was around my age when I when this was released, and his death made me very emotional. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go get my nuke fix. Keep freaking, you guys. Oh, <laughs> freaking. I like that. Uh, Michael Whitaker says... This is the movie that made comic book scribe Frank Miller quit Hollywood until Sin City. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say that anything after RoboCop 1 plays out like a slow moving train wreck. Mm. Slow moving is mm. slow, slow moving. Movings, yeah, that's accurate. Yeah. Uh, description. Uh, Grant Parrish says, as a kid, I always thought Hob was played by the same kid that played Yeah Yeah on the Sandlot. <laughs> <laughs> Just needed but some they classes. are different. Yeah. You he know, says, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah. it. We get it. Uh, so he says it's a little weird that Gabriel Damon, oh, yeah, this yeah. is the kid who played him, uh, went from being Littlefoot to baby drug lord. What? What? Is he, did he voice, voice Littlefoot? Little is that it, what he's trying to say? Because I saw Littlefoot earlier and I never looked it up. Shut did up. Did he voice Littlefoot? That is, shut up. like, he had to have done that within like the same like I'm three year span, saying. maybe, Max. Like, oh, that's weird. Gabriel Damon. Yeah, because Little. Don't look him up. Give me a minute. Okay. That's well, weird. You're That's really that weird. Uh, Neil Gums says, I actually remember Great getting. Name. <laughs> with a Z. <laughs> Neil Gums. I actually Better. remember getting carded when going to see this movie. 
And Mike Camp writes in and says, I still like this movie. Huh? Well, a lot there of people brighten in for RoboCop, too. Wow. Yeah. Right. This is a, one of the fullest mailbags we've ever had, yeah, right, Colin? Is, oh, it is. is. Yeah, oh, yeah. Finger on the pulse. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Sean. Of the, finger, finger on the finger pulse on the of pulse. our audience. If yeah. Congratulations, Sean. Well, finding the next page and a half looks like it's I, Pet Cemetery. That's Sean, right. We're, so. we're going out Pet Cemetery. I think we Rihanna. may have lost the pulse on this one. Well, I think a lot of people wrote dead? in, so yeah, everybody has seen it. Uh, have you found out uh, Gabriel Damon? Uh, Anything. Uh, Anything. You keep going. Oh, okay. Let's see. Because I'm going to say now we're going to Pet Cemetery. Okay, wait, hold on. We're going to find out what the folks What did we think he was in? Littlefoot. In uh, Land, Land Before, Before time. time. Land Before Time. Okay. Funky Brewster, Different Strokes. Holy shit. Webster, General Hospital, every TV show under Land the Land Before Time's like 1988. Pound Puppy. Something like so that. The Land Before Time, he voiced Littlefoot. That's what year so was weird. that? 1988. Wow. Holy shit. There you go. Oh. So two years later? Wow. Two years later. He's a baby he's drug, a drug lord. lord. Yeah. Yeah. Baby wow. drug lord. Crazy. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, I had yeah. no we idea. Learn stuff yeah. on the Saturday huh. Night Freak he's Show every week. Wow. Okay, about uh, last week, we watched Pet Cemetery, the 2019 version. Uh, Monty says, hello, Freak Show. I've listened to your podcast for about four years now and really enjoyed it. Wow. My wife and I recently saw the new Pet Cemetery movie. I'm a huge Stephen, F- Stephen King fan, and I love horror movies, but I have never seen the original movie or read the book because what? the concept is my biggest fear. After seeing the new movie... I'd have to say it was a good movie, not all that yeah. scary, and mostly forgettable. There you go. Yeah. So That's what it. part was good? Uh, the parts he could remember. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there, are, there are people who will watch those movies. I mean, he has no frame of reference. He hasn't right, seen that, the previous the movie. Yeah, but I don't want to get his review. It's good, but it's forgettable. Like that there would mean That's what I mean. You know what? That's what I mean. I'm yeah. like, what part was good? I appreciate that. I, I, I understand. You were entertained when you watched it, but you don't ever watch but it. But it's it immediately you left your brain. Right after that. I understand that yeah. review. I understand people who can go in and, and watch I do it. Pre- and I envy them yeah. on some level where mm-hmm. they can just go in, watch, and be like, cool, I'm done. Never need to watch it again. Had a good time. And I do check the yeah, box. And I know? do appreciate because I I'm, I remember I specifically asked. I was like, I want to know people who have not seen the original. I want to yes. know what you think this about is, the quality of this go. movie. We got yeah. some more of those. Okay. Yeah. So. If anything, it should make the most impression on him because he has no he went in with a clean slate, right? Yeah. Like ideally he should like remember like it should be most memorable to him. Exactly. Uh, and it's but, so this is a bad this movie's a failure. Movie. This movie's a exactly. failure. Yeah. Even for people who have a clean slate, it's exactly. doing nothing for them. I will not disagree that yeah. it's a failure. Okay, but here's the thing. He said it was definitely the better movie I saw in the theaters that week because it was a double feature with Hellboy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bad movie double feature. It's been a rough first quarter for I know, horror I'm like, movies, guys. I'm the yeah. outside of this. I actually dug the new Hellboy. I'm sure if I watch it again, it's probably wretched. Sure. But I like, well, I was entertained I by seen it. it. This yeah. is us saying that uh, everyone besides Colin has not watched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I haven't judgmental seen judgmental of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he says thanks for all the movies you suggested for movie nights with my wife. Oh, I love that yeah. date night with the freak show. That's right. Now you get to watch <laughs> RoboCop too. Brent Zemecki says. Well, as requested, I have never seen the entirety of the original Pet Cemetery, just bits and pieces. I hated this new one. Yes. The movie is a boring waste of time. If I did not have AMC stubs, I would be kicking myself for spending the money. Right? Right there. Yeah. I spent my own money on that movie. I was upset about that. I mean, that. I did too through AMC Stubbs, but still. But you know what's yeah, dumb is I went with Holly and didn't right. even think about the fact that, that she is... could get me in. <laughs> I don't and I, get. And I'm I, like, yeah. you should have got My <laughs> ass was in the seat and she texted me. She was like, you didn't need a ticket. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> yep. uh, uh, Nick Siebel writes in and says, last week while I was at the movies, I found myself conflicted. Ultimately, I decided to see Shazam over Pet Cemetery 2019. Good choice. And I want to thank the Saturday Night Freak Show for taking one for the team. <laughs> even while watching the trailer for the new Pet Cemetery, I felt something was off. Then mm. I found out John Lithgow wasn't even going to stay true to the story and drop the iconic main accent. I knew fuckery was about these Hollywood cash grabs <laughs> yep, always yep. turn out to be shit. Mm, yep, you, a- <laughs> you are correct, sir. You are I correct. Think fuckery is about. I love the passion that's coming through <laughs> yeah. with uh, this this particular movie in the and, and um yeah, and he let us know that he liked Shazam. He thought it was all right. No, yeah, it's good. It's not, yeah, hey, right. if you I still haven't a, seen that, it's not bad. I'm yeah. never going to be mad at someone for ha- choosing to have a good time at the movies. Yeah, 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 yeah like exactly. Angry, like, exactly. It's not bad. No, it's yeah. not bad. Uh, it's good. I like to watch. Said the film just doesn't look very great. The director's debut, Starry Eyes, was such a great film. 
I like Star Wars. I know Colin differs, but no, I, I didn't hate it. I didn't I mean, see it. I mean, I say I like it, but like I don't. At the same time, I don't know if I ever watch it again. Yeah, you exactly. know, like I liked it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. it's an okay first time yeah. movie. <laughs> not forgettable like the other person. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you watch it, like, it, cool. It's I'll never, fine. Yeah. never watch it again. Karate right. Warrior Two says Pet Cemetery no. summarized in one line from this week's episode. Just don't fucking see it. Just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. As a result, yeah. I That's shan't true. be seeing this. I, I can't even pin that down to who I said that. that. I, I, I feel like it was Michaela. But I don't know. That could have been I was real worked yeah. up in that yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we probably. all were very, that was very uh, high energy episode. I yeah. think we were all pretty amped up. You got to go one. back and listen to well, the because last episode. Banger. Because we all had so many thoughts and we had to keep it in for 24 hours before we yeah. could talk right. about it. So it was I was explosion. the opposite. I said like nothing on that episode because I had checked the fuck out of that movie. <laughs> It's like done. I, Did you I, uh, explode? And well, kind of. You haven't said a whole lot of, about RoboCop two either, haven't Holly. I? Mm. Haven't I? Could be. <laughs> I think. Haven't I, haven't I said a lot with what I, I haven't said? Chosen her words carefully, yeah. and I think all the meaning is behind them. Uh, Amos Martinez writes in and says, "I'm clearly in the minority here, but I enjoyed Pet Cemetery for what it was. In my opinion, both this and the originals are failures in different ways as adaptations of the book, but both succeed in different ways as well. This is my second favorite King book, so I really don't." Think any film adaptation could knock my socks off, but both versions are decent to me. I think we can all agree that this is miles better than Pet Cemetery Two, though. I've never actually. I've seen never Pet it's actually seen it. God awful so, bad. Isn't Edward Furlong? God, yes. you two are digging a hole. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Right Stop now. saying it. It was out of my mind, and you're like, I've never seen it. It's like, oh Jesus! All right, on the list. God uh, damn it. Oh god. No, that won't. Uh, that again. That'll be another year before. Anything isn't like the, that comes. Doesn't look, there's like a movie set, right? Yeah, it takes place on like a movie set mostly. Oh, yeah, the or, okay. The Furlong's yeah. mom dies yeah. at the beginning, and then oh, god. She, he finds a pet cemetery. Clancy Brown's in it. Yeah, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is in it. Yeah. I just don't need to ever watch another Edward Furlong movie ever. <laughs> uh, Night of the Demons remake. Not bad. Uh, hmm. Sea Huds. Sea Huds. He writes in and says, I watched Pet Cemetery yesterday. I'm a big fan of the original. It was fine with the remake. Here's my problem with remakes of the 80s and 90s movies, though. Mm. There hasn't been the quantum leap in, leap in technology from the 1980s to today that there was from the 30s, 40s, and 50s to the 1980s. So we're getting reasonably well-made new versions of already reasonably well-made or very well-made movies just with different actors and sets. It's not really that much different than seeing a play on Broadway than seeing it off Broadway in your town 30 years later. This doesn't. It's a good analogy. Yeah, he pretty says good. there doesn't seem to be a point other than money. That's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nothing has advanced yeah. so much that it's worth doing. Yeah, I get yeah. That. yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Laws says the movie is was so terrible it failed at everything. <laughs> Yes. Yes. And also Ryan, an adequate, succinct description. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Ryan Handsome Jansen says, "You guys are really making me not want to watch this." <laughs> Save Good. Your money. We're doing you. Good. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. He says you guys are really making me want to watch. Uh, this. Oh, well, for, the, that, for the lols. Yeah. Sort of the curiosity of like every, I, uh, they say it's horrible. And so, I feel yeah, like, now no, I must watch it. No, now I, I feel like we. I feel like we failed it. We failed. <laughs> vote, vote with your wallet. <laughs> vote no, with your wallet. Some people who are just like. Even I get that. We're just like, oh, God, they said it was horrible. I have to go see it. Now. Um, it, May I remind you, Holly took me to see Gotti on my birthday last I did. year because uh, it had a 0% right, on Rotten like, Tomatoes. Like, yeah. everyone, oh, everyone hates this. I yeah, must I'm, see it. No, but we regret nothing from that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, was so that was a great this. night. <laughs> yep. Well, that leads us to the final round of the Saturday Night Freak Show when we throw RoboCop 2 to the dog. Colin. Yes, Sean. Hey, Colin, what did you think about tonight's movie, RoboCop 2? Um, well, I'll tell you where I started on this movie. Okay. Uh, when you said you were bringing it last week, I, I was like, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those, like, I thought history had kind of put RoboCop 2 where it needed to be, which is forgotten. There's RoboCop, right? RoboCop. Robocop. And, like nobody nobody saw the prime directives, right? Am I confident no, in this? I don't, I don't nobody saw Robocop did, no. three. Okay, Die Hard's dead. Everybody's listening to this fucking show probably saw all the At fucking least Robocops. Once. Yeah, because I have. One time. Okay. I didn't like this one the first time <laughs> I saw it in the theater. Um it came out like I remember it was the first movie of the summer of nineteen ninety. This was like it's summer season and it was May and it was like Robocop two. And so I went and saw it. And I came out 
uh, extremely disappointed is a uh, mild way of putting it. And then I think like next week was uh, Die Hard 2 and everything uh, uh, turned around. There you go. Uh, and then everything was <laughs> right with the world. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, this writer. is the movie. Yeah. You know, like finally right. I got what I wanted to see. Um, I think on this watch, I was more aware of the political satire that's in it. And obviously, I think with RoboCop, at least the, you know, following off of what Verhoeven did in the first one, this is a focus of uh, what they're going for in the second one. So I see what they're doing with, uh, you know, a lot of their jabs and the satire. I just don't think that it lands. Um, I don't know. It just... Uh, I think one of the worst things that you can do to a movie hero is make fun of them in their own movie. Mm. And that really, because it, it undercuts them in some way that's like, well, then why the fuck do I care about this? Like somehow you have to get behind them. Like if they are brought low by the, the circumstances around them, you know, and you're like, yeah, man, pull yourself back up and get, but this guy they're being brought low by the filmmakers. Right. In some way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I think I see the the intellectual thing that was going on here. It's like you sure. know, by making him the PC police, like literally, uh, <laughs> that's funny in and of, of of itself, but it doesn't work in the film uh, somehow because you know, I mean, you're talking about uh, subtext and text, and when you're actually making a movie about a guy who's supposed to be the hero of your film and you like, you know, cut his legs out from underneath him. It's like literally even in, yeah, <laughs> literally that's what I'm going for here. I mean, they're doing, you know, uh, even in service of the, the, the subtext, it's like you're, there's some kind of like you've broken the movie somehow. Um, it goes on forever. Uh, I hated all the characters. Nobody's likable. Um, there's not a whole lot of, uh, like I mean, Kane, I don't know at all. You yeah. know, after having seen this movie, it's like he's too I don't relax to be a bad guy. Yeah, he he's just a he's got a messiah complex. Yeah, that's the generic thing we assign him. So he's a messiah complex. He's a Charles Manson or something like that. But I mean, I just don't feel it. You know, it's like he's a non-entity in it. Uh, Alex Murphy should. It's like you got to pick a fucking lane. It seems like the thing that they were most interested in was OCP. Yeah, in this movie and RoboCop's in the OCP movie. Um, I just didn't enjoy it. You know, I mean, I guess that's the thing. And watching it tonight, it wasn't as a horrible as an experience as I was expecting. But um, I wouldn't. I don't know why I'd recommend this to anybody. You know, I mean, the first RoboCop is like RoboCop. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's they succinct, kept making it's these things, the name, but you don't yeah. really need to go see them. I mean, I would argue in favor of the new one, um, because it has some interesting ideas in it. I think it does pull them off. And I think that the biggest problem with it is bringing the baggage of this is RoboCop. Yeah. You know, if you took, if you called it anything else, anything else. Robot cop. Yeah. Something you would be like, well, this is a pretty decent science fiction movie, but you know, it feels a lot like RoboCop, but at least it's, you know, called something else. Um, so that one I thought was okay, but you know, like RoboCop two, you can, that can fuck off. RoboCop three was God awful bad. And doesn't even, you know, <laughs> Like, Peter Waller didn't even want to have anything no. to do with it. Well, no, you know what? That's wrong. He did. Scheduling conflicts, he couldn't play the part. He did want to have something to do with oh, okay. it. He I would have played him again. That, like, he hated being in that suit. Uh, he he does, described he did, it like a well, gigantic he like, condom. He didn't like being in the suit, but he would. He said he wanted to do it again. Okay. He would have done it well, again. I stand corrected. And then there's RoboCop, the Prime Directive's yeah. four movies, and you can go watch those. So, uh, I think you can... I don't know. I, it, you know, it's a thing. Uh, entertainment value. Did I have fun? The answer is no. So uh, you can skip RoboCop 2. Michaela, what'd you think? Uh, RoboCop movies in general, I have a hard time connecting with and being interested in. Uh, Holly and I were talking off mic that, like, I know I've seen the first one and I retain, like, almost nothing from it. And I think for a Verhoeven movie, that's not usually very common. Like, usually remember his movies when you see them. It's just not something that personally Show works girls. for me or interests me. Um, Can I, I ask you something uh, really quick? I'm yeah. sorry. No, I go for that, it. Like, I keep on interrupting no, your No, by all means. <laughs> Is there a parallel between, do you see narratively, uh -huh. a parallel between uh, RoboCop and The Crow? 
I can see that. Mm, yeah. There's, I can see that. A, absolutely. There's a resurrection uh, analogy yeah. that. Yeah. 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 One's like the science fiction version. And one's, one's the goth like the, version. Yeah. 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 I, I, I totally yeah. agree it's, with it's that. Science right. versus spiritual at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So is that the difference? Because you're saying Robocop doesn't appeal to you, but I know you're a fan of The Crow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, and I was talking to Holly off mic too that like I was just kind of being reminded the whole time that I would rather be watching the Dread remake. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, if that if the, I want this kind of story, I'll watch the Dread remake because that the drug they're doing in that movie is really fucking cool, oh, right. and it's it's slow mo, it slows down everything, it slows down your vision, you see people's heads explode in slow motion. It's like it's a very similar story, but executed w- in a way better way and way more interesting, mm. I think. So I would much rather just watch the Dread remake, and that's what I was thinking about watching this. I should it, watch that movie. And uh, Carl, yeah, <laughs> you should. It's not a sequel, otherwise, we'd see <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. And too bad. Carl too bad. Carl Urban's great. Olivia Thurston be and uh, Le- uh, Lena Headey, Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones is yeah. the villain of that movie, and she's and Don great. Hall Gleason is also yeah. G- mm-hmm. Gleason, 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 Gleason. Yeah, He's yeah, also yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, I need to. Wa- as it actually is, yeah. I need to watch this movie. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really I finally, good. I finally need to watch. Yeah, this movie. it's really good. I I had to be talked into watching it, and then once I watched it, I was like, oh, sure, okay, oh, yeah, I'm awesome. sure I'll, yeah. I'll really like it when it happens. But mm-hmm. I'm just like, <laughs> it's been putting it off forever. I was kind yeah. of upset. I c- I didn't like commit to seeing it in 3D in theaters because I'm sure mm-hmm. it would have been. I've got amazing. it in 3D. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, but this movie, I just there was no one for me to grab onto. There was nothing for me to invest in it was way too long i just i just didn't enjoy watching it if it works for you and it's something you like that's fine i don't think this is like the worst movie i've ever seen it just it's just not something that interests me and it's a world i have a hard time accessing so it's okay if you like it <laughs> you know i'm not not hating mm-hmm. on it because like there's definitely i just don't i don't feel passionately one way or another about this movie i just i can't access it <laughs> so holly what did you think um yeah i'm i'm with you with with RoboCop is not really my jam. Um, I know I watched it, but I didn't grow up with it. I've seen it probably like once or twice in my whole life. Um, so I don't really have a strong attachment to RoboCop in any way. So going, going into this, I was like, you know what? I'm open to it. Maybe I missed out on something because I didn't watch the sequels. I was like, all right, maybe there was this really great time in the 90s that I missed out on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it, you know? Um, but sadly... <laughs> That did not happen. I I did not retain anything from the original RoboCop, and I feel like maybe it really just isn't my bag because this movie, I was not remotely engaged at any point in this movie. I mean, I know we talked earlier about the the intense opening sequence, you know, when we were first introduced to RoboCop and like the big fight at the end, nothing. I had there was no point in this movie that I was really invested in any of it. And like we said earlier, I did not connect with any of the characters. I don't know who... I know I'm supposed to be rooting for RoboCop, but I don't know why. And <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess he's good. I don't know. I don't give a shit. I've, I've given up on Detroit like the rest of the world. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Don't care. So, no, I cannot even remotely recommend this movie at all. Sean. Uh, understand. Although I am wearing a Detroit t-shirt. You are. <laughs> did you do that on purpose? I didn't. You, no. no. Wow, I didn't. That's, that's pretty ironic. <laughs> that, that's happening. Um... I liked uh, Michaela's explanation. It's like, if you do like this, I'm not going to blame you for no, it. It's fine. Because that's perfectly fine. I will not come down on someone who's just like, I really like RoboCop. I'm just like, you know what? All right, I that's get it. That's because Sean really likes RoboCop. Uh, he, uh, because I'm I am not, that person. I'm gonna <laughs> turn this around on you and be like, I don't, actually. Oh, because shit. Oh, it's, shit. It's not a thing. I, I usually, uh, as we've discussed before, I bring movies to this free show as, as part of therapy, mm-hmm. as part of rediscovery. As part of yes. movies that I have not seen in a while that uh, I feel need to be revisit- revisited and looked at again. Um, I bring movies here to, to kind of form my final opinion on them going forward in life. Um, and uh, Robocop 2 is, um, I mean, how do you not compare it to the first one? Uh, it's extremely hard because Robocop, in my opinion, is arguably, um, I, I think I can argue it as a perfect movie. Or at least looking at the story arc of Murphy in that movie, I can argue that it is perfect from where he starts to where he ends. Um, it is really great storytelling. And when we get to this movie, um, it really doesn't, it feels like it doesn't even try to do that with any of the characters. Like it's not, um, really trying to go anywhere with them. Nobody really changes from, from beginning to end in this movie. And it's, I mean, it's really kind of disappointing. There's other elements of this movie that they do really well. I did like the, 
um, satirical like interstitials from the news in this. They did that very well. Um, I um, I am a fan of the stop motion fight uh, mm. that they do have. I did I, I did yeah. I did like the com- the fake commercials. Fake commercials yeah. are always great. I did like um, the fake commercials. I, I like those. The stop like the stop. I, don't know, motion. I was like sitting there going like, should I recommend this movie just for the stop motion? I don't. You know if what? You're I a don't... Stop motion junkie. Then you should see this. Movie. It's good. Like yeah. the stop motion is good. Like I really enjoyed it in this movie, and I'm a I'm a big fan of it. That's a big selling point to this movie. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it is really overly long. This movie is almost two hours, and you can cut. There might be a a, a good movie in the middle of this somewhere. Like you need to cut a half hour it's out like of a it, different though. movie. It's like it, it you, might the be stuff yeah. that you would cut out of this is the stuff with the wife. But like oh, that's yeah. actually the thing that probably would have made this movie more right. Like that's what RoboCop is like. Well, you're a man, but not a man. Right. Are you? Or are you a machine? Like, deal with that. Right. That's the interesting like, storyline. Yeah, but get rid of that. We got to action. Right. This is an uh, action movie with, uh, we got to shoot people and there's going to be kids. And, you know, we got a uh, drug lords or cultists and everything. And just like the bad guy. Yeah. Uh, Tom Noonan is not like they do nothing with him as a bad guy. He's very just like, pfft. he's milk toast. Uh, he, there's no extreme in that. Um, I don't know. It's yeah, it's I don't think it's not worth. There are a lot of good elements to this movie, but boy, do they not add up to a uh, a very good movie. It is it does end up being boring and that's unfortunate. Um, Definitely watch RoboCop. If you want to go like if you want to go watch this movie, go ahead. I'm I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to watch it again. I'll tell you that, but I won't. Uh, I won't stop you from watching it. I guess is the, the where we're at on the recommendation. Um, I, I I can't recommend that you should watch it. So I think that's where we're at. Um, that's a pass on RoboCop two. That's four. That, wow. I, I so think it's an ultimate pass. pass. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't see. That's it's a hot mess, mess, as somebody said. It really. It's a hot damn mess, <laughs> as they say. Yeah, yeah. It really is. So there you go. Mm. All right, so next week on Saturday Night Freak Show, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Yes. I don't know. It feels like you have something in store for us just by the look on your face. What are we watching next week? So when we record, we're going to record the weekend that Avengers comes out. Uh, So as far as I'm concerned, it's summer movie season. Ooh. And what better way to start off summer movie season than with a creature feature? We're gonna oh, watch- I like this. This, this sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. We're going to watch Lake Placid. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, yeah. that's fine. Giant crocodiles. Yeah. yeah. We like giant yeah. creatures. I've had this in my back pocket for years. Me too. I've been like, I just got to wait for the right time for Lake Placid. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. All right. I feel, I feel yeah. another Anaconda episode uh, coming on, which get is your, all right with me. Get your sexy netting. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening. Oh, get your sexy netting and settle in for Lake Placid. <laughs> all right, yeah. so Lake Placid is next week's movie, and until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>